Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Steve here from PC Budget Solutions. And if I sound really excited, it's for two reasons. I have air conditioning, again, so really happy about that. And um, Ryzen 3 overclocked versus Intel i3 overclocked. Really, really, really excited. I actually already know the answers. I'll uh, definitely let you guys know that up front. I do know the answers. I'm really excited to bring it to you. We're testing a GTX 1060 and 1080. Um, I know you guys really talk about bottlenecks, bottlenecks, bottlenecks. So that's why I threw the 1080 in there. And it also gives us a much clearer picture of what's going on. So let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with today. So first things first, let's take a look at what I did. So the AMD Ryzen 3 1200 is overclocked all the way to 3.9 gigahertz. Now, that did actually hit about 1.45 volts on the core. That's definitely a lot higher than I'd ever recommend doing. But for this testing, and I'm keeping the chip, um, I was okay with that for the short term. I didn't do it super long. 1.2 volts on the SOC. I used the Azeroth B350M board, obviously. I used the same memory, but clocked all the way up to 2933 megahertz. And I'm using a Seasonic S12 II power supply. On the Intel side, it's the exact same platform as before, except I did clock up the memory a little bit, only paired with the GTX 1080, and everything else stayed the same since I couldn't overclock. So that's what we're looking at. Let's start taking a look at some benchmarks. First benchmark, we have superposition. So as you'll see, I pulled the results from yesterday's, or the previous video rather, and the only difference is, is you have a Ryzen uh, 3 1200 overclock really didn't perform any better. I mean, I would call that margin of error. Then we go ahead and pair it up with the GTX 1080. And still, they're so close that it really didn't matter. Technically, the overclock Ryzen 3 won, but honestly, we're definitely at a dead heat. So mm -hmm. when all when the CPU bottlenecks removed and it's actually a GPU bottleneck, they all pretty much respond the same. Let's look at Firestrike. For the most part, I saw results that I liked, and then a couple results I didn't like. So, first things first is I like that the combined and the physx did quite a bit better with the uh, overclocked Ryzen chip. Um, we're looking at roughly a 6 FPS increase with the GTX 1060, roughly, is I think where we're looking at with the combined, <coughs> or physx rather. Now, what I didn't like was the graphical score because they still told the same story as the last slide. Basically, in this one, the i3 actually did edge it out by a margin that's almost relevant, 2%. Could definitely fall within margin of error. When you look at the combined and the physx score, though, the Ryzen still walks away with it. So, still the same story going on. Let's see if it continues. Okay, this is getting a little bit old. Graphical tests falling right in line with each other. Physx obviously pulling out the overclock. Literally, I had like what, two results on the Physx being identical with the CPU. Um, but the overall scores were pretty much within margin of error. I told you guys I was excited. Sorry to bore you guys, but trust me, good stuff's coming. The synthetics were really, really bottlenecked by this GPU no matter what we did so let's take a look at something real and let's see if indeed my excitement holds true so this is the reason why i brought the 1080 in because these these results were going to look the same um so at, at the gtx 1060 rather you know the results didn't show any difference but with the gtx 1080 at 1080p at high settings where the gpu is really not going to be bottlenecked we actually saw enough of a difference. Granted, it's only 3%, but now we're looking at almost 5 FPS difference. What I thought was probably the most interesting is how much better the i3 did at the 3.9 versus the R3 at like a 3.4. So it seems the clock speed definitely made a difference, but 1440p, we brought the bottleneck back. So here we go. We have some results, but let's talk about from the bottom up. With the GTX 1060, they were close enough where I could literally chalk it up to margin of error, almost a dead heat. I, I would go to say that maybe if, if I ran the results, I might get something more concrete, but we're going to call it a dead heat. But when we start to remove the GPU bottleneck, we start getting some answers. So 1080p, okay, an overclocked Ryzen 3 with overclocked memory literally went from 75 fps to 94. i mean that's a huge jump and i re-ran these tests 
multiple times on all three setups and they all came back the same. I can't really give a good explanation on why at 1080p and 1440p both the stock Ryzen 3 and Intel i3 perform within almost within margin of error of 1080p versus 1440. I would probably go to say that they are both bottlenecking at the exact same point whereas you know the Ryzen 3 overclock with the faster memory was able to push you know not not basically slow the GPU down as much at 1080p whereas the 1440p results were pretty much the same between that and i3 so these were results we were looking for we we're looking for some tangible reason and granted Ryzen 3 overclock's been winning but this is a decisive win let's take a look at one more thing we're going to wrap this up okay I lied two more things this is the first of two Cinebench Love me some Cinebench. Love me a lot of Cinebench. So here we have the Intel i3 running at 408 points, Ryzen 3 at stock speeds at 464. Kind of what we expected, but with memory and CPU overclock, we gained over 100 points. That's huge. That's a lot of raw throughput going from 464 to 571. And honestly, the i3 can't get any more powerful. Mm -hmm. I had it as fast as it possibly can go. So you're looking at almost, almost 50% more of raw CPU performance, probably around like 40%. And that is huge. And that kind, I think, answers the question that we've been asking for some time. But let's take a look at thermals because that's going to have a little bit of play in all this. So let's see what those results look like. Thermals weren't bad. Now, when you look at it, 82 degrees Celsius is not something I would feel comfortable with doing. Mind you, this came up while gaming in some scenarios just because that's kind of unneeded. But a couple things to consider. 82 degrees Celsius isn't horrible. It's outside my comfort zone. We're running 1.45 volts on a stock cooler, not the you know Ryzen 7 stock cooler, which I do have those laying around, the one that comes with the actual chip. And mind you, the voltage was really high. And mind you, my AC was out during the beginning of these tests. So I was running a 30 degrees Celsius ambient temperature. The i3, however, was running close to 70 degrees in a similar scenario. I don't think it was quite that hot at that point. But at stock speeds, 52 degrees Celsius, that's impressive. That told me it's had a lot of headroom. So you could go out and buy a Arctic Kohler nine, or a $20 uh, CPU Kohler and overclock this thing. Granted, I wouldn't let like him go 1.4 volts, but if you did, you'll shorten the lifespan. But if you're only going to have it for three to four years, who cares? It's a $100 CPU. Um, you can get a lot of performance out of this. So that's really, really, really impressive. I'm really happy with the results. Let's tie this up and let's get to my final thoughts. So there we have it. And I think we got results that we were, for the most part, expecting. Ryzen 3 overclock, when it was matching Intel clock for clock, it was going to perform pretty much the same level or better. Clearly, even with the GTX 1080, we ran in some bottlenecks. As you saw, all three chips either ran almost at the same, or when they were at the same speed, they ran almost the same. But luckily, where it matters, games. We saw a nice sizable increase over KV Lake compared to the Ryzen chip. I think some of that has to do with faster memory speed. 2933 versus 2400 definitely made a difference. I wouldn't say that was leaps and bounds better, but as you saw in For Honor, a couple frames and Ghost Recon, that was weird. Um, I ran those tests on both the stock i3 and overclock KV Lake multiple times and I was getting really weird results. I think that we actually ran into a CPU bottleneck at that point. So, really interesting results. I think you guys know what the answer is. Ryzen's here to stay. Intel, we're waiting for you to respond. We love competition here at PC Budget Solutions. I love doing videos like this, so let me know if you liked it. If you didn't like it, that's fine. Let me know. Uh, I won't do more budget stuff if you guys don't like it, even though that's kind of core of what I do. Uh, but thank you guys for tuning in. This is Steve from PC Budget Solutions. I'll see you guys later on down the road.